I don't usually cover GPU launches, so I wasn't planning to talk about the Intel Arc desktop GPUs, but we desperately need to talk about the Linux support, because Intel has done a frankly terrible job at explaining this to the general public, and this isn't helped by the fact that a lot of people have been poorly propagating this information. So you've probably seen this image floating around. This is for the Intel Arc A770, where for the OS support, it says Windows 10 and 11, and it doesn't say Linux support, it says Ubuntu support. Then there are articles from popular tech sites like this one from WCCF Tech, where this right here is said, Reports over the last several months show the steps Intel has taken to ensure that their DG2 architecture and Alchemist desktop GPUs are prepared for the 5.19 kernel. The window for version 5.19 has closed and now work towards Linux 6.0 has begun. This bit right here, totally fine. If that's all it said, no issue. Then they said, Intel is focused on ensuring that Linux 6.0 will be the minimum requirement for the new Arc desktop GPU components. And very similar statements were made by YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips. So let's hear what he has to say. Intel also made a good case for not using Arc on Linux for the foreseeable future. Sorry guys, I know that you had high hopes, but currently Arc only supports kernel version 6 and Intel has said that they do not plan on supporting version 5, meaning that every stable version of Linux is currently not supported. To put this in perspective for the non-Linux folks out there, this is basically like Intel launching a product, but only having drivers for Windows 12. He's not 100% wrong, but the way that it is framed is not correct. So we'll get into the kernel in just a moment, but there is another requirement that's not really being talked about anywhere near as much. Mesa 22.2. So Mesa is basically a graphics library that gives Linux access to OpenGL and Vulkan implementation. Basically a thing that lets your GPU do GPU things. And support for Intel Arc has been in Mesa for quite a while. It's not like they added everything in one giant patch. It has been additions over additions over additions for about a year or so now. But the first version where it's actually considered stable and ready to use is 22.2. So depending on how it's configured on your specific distro, you may be able to use your Intel Arc GPU with an older version of Mesa. But if your distro doesn't ship at least this version, 22.2 is the minimum stable version. I would highly recommend that you avoid buying an Intel Arc GPU until your distro ships that version or until you swap to a distro using at least that version. Now I can understand the confusion around the kernel, but 6.0 isn't the minimum requirement. This is just the place where you'll get the best out of box experience. So the change in 6.0 is the graphics drivers for the Intel Arc GPU were upstreamed into the kernel. Basically they were added into the kernel project. So when you download the Linux 6.0 kernel, you automatically have graphics drivers for the Intel Arc GPU. And what Intel means by support isn't that this is the only place the drivers are going to work, it's this is the only place they are going to go and actively provide support. So Intel has made these drivers and then tested them against the 6.0 kernel. So if there are bugs with the 6.0 kernel and things like that, they're going to go and fix them. But if a distro like, say, Debian, for example, wants to go and take those drivers and then backport them to an older kernel like... 5.19 or 5.15 or something like that, they can go and do so, but Intel isn't going to help you do that. You are on your own. With that in mind, I do think Intel should have a slightly wider support window, at least to the kernels that distros are actually running. Because unless you're using a rolling release, you don't have a 6.0 kernel and aren't going to for a very long time. The Ubuntu kernel freeze has already happened, so anything based on Ubuntu that's using the same kernel that Ubuntu is using is going to be using 5.19 at least until April. And I can't blame LTT for this because nobody outside of the Linux space knows this, but kernel versioning does not work the way that you think it works. Let's have another listen to what he said but currently, Arc only supports kernel version 6, 
and Intel has said that they do not plan on supporting version 5. That doesn't mean what you think it means. So... Linux isn't like, say, GTK, where you have GTK3, GTK4, GTK5, Qt, Qt5, Qt6, Qt7, Python 2, Python 3, and maybe Python 4 into the future. And then with this example of Windows 11 to Windows 12. So kernel versioning is completely meaningless. 6.0 isn't some special release, even though people are celebrating it. It is not massively distinct from any earlier version. The funny thing about 6.0 is it was going to be called 5.20. The reason why it's not 5.20 is Linus didn't like the number 20, and he felt like, hey, we should just reset the numbering and go up to 6.0. This is actually a thing that happened. I'll leave a link to the mailing list down below. There are very likely other changes in the 6.0 release that help to benefit Intel Arc, but it is not a hard requirement for the drivers to be on the 6.0 kernel. It is just upstream drivers. So distros that aren't running 6.0 are going to be backporting those drivers to these older kernel versions. Debian being a great example of this, but many others will be doing so. Not every distro, so in some cases you may need to wait until the newest version, but a lot of distros will be doing this. And you know how I can say for 100% certain that this can be done? Because Intel is literally doing this. Right now over on the Intel website, Intel has documentation for installing the Ubuntu drivers on the past two Ubuntu LTS releases. So this takes you back to 20.04, which is running kernel 5.14. Now this isn't the exact version shipping on Ubuntu. They actually make a modified version of the kernel that you have to go and install separately, but you can get these drivers working in this older version. So rather than them just being part of the kernel, they are loaded through a system known as DKMS, Dynamic Kernel Module Support, basically loading the drivers from outside of the kernel into the kernel. And these steps will obviously be a little bit different, but other distros are going to do the exact same thing. And I don't know why anybody in the Linux space was possibly concerned about this, because this is all totally normal stuff for Linux. It sort of is what it is. Now, I have no plans on buying a first generation Intel desktop GPU. I, if I'm gonna buy one, will wait until at least the second generation. The reason for this is I wanna let other people go and do the beta testing for me, and then I'll decide down the line. So I'm probably gonna stick with AMD for this time, but if Intel keeps making these GPUs, I know there are some rumors that they plan to just kill it after the first generation, but if they plan to keep going, maybe in the future, I will have an Intel GPU. So I hope the launch goes really well, and we actually see a legitimate third entry in the desktop GPU market, because we certainly need some competition. So if there's anything you take away from this video that you want to share around, keep in mind, Intel only actively supports Mesa 22.2 and onwards, and Kernel 6.0 and onwards, with the exception of Ubuntu, where they'll also support 20.04, 22.04, and very likely 22.10 when that also releases, and then anything going into the future. And it will likely work on other distros, but it is up to your distro to actually ship those drivers. So let me know, are you going to buy an Intel Arc desktop GPU, or are you planning to wait it out and just see what happens going into the future? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.